All right, Edwin. <laughs> that is such a cool score. I love this intro right in here. In fact, let's just jump right into it um, with one tiny little note I'm going to share with you first. And that is like right here, you um, you have the um, the chord here go to a um, to a six four chord, right uh, on the C or on sorry, excuse me, C is the is the bottom note, but on the F, right? So it's like a yeah, an F six four chord, and so but like technically, it should just be a simple C major chord there, right? Um, and I'm just looking back at the original score. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, there's there isn't really a whole lot of of guidance there in terms of like the left hand. The left hand doesn't play a chord at all, right? So so I don't blame you for possibly thinking that it should be something else. But it you know this chord does not really set this up very well, right? It just it just feels slightly wrong within the context of the period. Okay. But all right, that's. Not a big deal. Let's let's get back to this um, to this analysis and just really focus in on our evaluation criteria. I just want this to be as helpful as possible to you as an orchestrator. Um, I think it's lovely that you have chosen the key of G for this, and and yet there's a wonderful placidity to this music that really reminds me of the uh, symphony in F, number six, <laughs> right? <laughs> right, F major rather than G major. I think you could have easily just scored this whole thing in F major with, um, with C trumpets. And I, I think it would have felt even more like Beethoven, right? Like it would have felt even more like, like his uh, symphonic and orchestral uh, works in F. Okay. Uh, so, you know, first question, does the intro set the mood effectively? And I really feel that it does because like you, um, you know, you, t you take this nice and slow in the mock-up and everything, you know, you, you have like this entrance here, which is, is very much like an orchestral, you know, like, or like a symphonic entrance for a Beethoven theme, right? Just like in the, in the first violins, like I talked about in the, um, in the pitfalls video. But then, you know, you start off with this chorale and I feel that the, um, that for the most part, the phrasing is pretty nicely done. Uh, this is cool right in here. Here, I think you could have broken this up into ta, ta, right? So just like slurred the second half of the bar rather than slurring all the way across. So, you know, avoid things like, you avoid things like slurring this, this, you know, these two Fs together and the written Fs and the A clarinets and so on. I mean, look, your, your bassoons are telling you what you should do for everybody in the rest of the bar, right? And then this works out great. And then, uh, I mean, do you really want to take away the ta from this, from, you know, the, it's almost like this, this little, um, this little ornament here, this turn, is headed right for this E. So do you just really want to land on this E without any enunciation whatsoever? Ta, ta, right? Shouldn't it be that? Shouldn't you, you know, get a little bit of punctuation out of it? In which case I would say, like also do that with the A clarinets, right? And then here, like you were conscious to, to have everybody do the fermata all the way to the end of the bar. Right, so that exactly right. Uh, and I really love the way that this bassoon climbs and climbs and climbs all the way up to this G. Uh, that's just very, very cool. It just has the brightest kind of sound at the beginning. Um, yeah, just very lovely. And that, and like the way that you have scored everything, the flute ends up in, you know, going right into its strongest register by the end, by the time everybody else has climbed up so high. And so it's not getting swallowed up by the other instruments. And then like starting off here, like the, with the way everything is voiced, the flute will still have a chance of, of standing out. Now, if you just have a flute, you do not have to write in the number. You don't have to write in one flute, just flute, right? So cross this off, flute, two oboes, two clarinets, two bassoons. And, you know, once again, like a nod to the late classical style where you'd have uh, composers like um, like Mozart 
uh, of which this is also reminiscent, uh, just using a single flute, right? That's all they needed. They didn't really need two flutes a lot of the time. Uh, it really wasn't until later that uh, two flutes became really a standard. Um, so, yeah, so uh, this is cool. I mean, <clears throat> if you really wanted to get the most expression out of this, you could have had a little bit of a push, a little bit of a a hairpin crescendo going towards this beat and perhaps also a bit of retardando and a fermata right da 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 do you see what i mean it's just like like you, you, the conductor is probably going to do that anyways so if you like that idea give them permission if you don't like that idea don't put it in the score and just see what they do all right um, and if you hate the idea, just put in non-retardando. No, you don't have to do that. You don't have to go that far. Okay, so now, uh, on to our next criteria. Does the melody start with elegance? Is there a natural transition to octaves? I, I just really love the simplicity of the scoring here. I, I just think it's wonderful. And I, I hope that there are some other comments out there about this too. Um, you know, I love the horns in G. Um, you know, playing those Ds, sounding Ds. Um, and uh, yeah, it just a just beautiful, smooth um, violin scoring. Edwin, I, th I think you have to think a little bit more about the continuity of bowing. See, like here you have thought it out, right? You've thought, okay, I'm going to go up bow, then the player's going to go down bow, and then up bow again, right? So you see, you've thought it out here. But you haven't really thought about it here, right? These are really long bows. Now, of course, at, at a soft dynamic, this is all possible. So, you know, and, and it's possible for other scores where I've said, hey, why don't you just, you know, do bow on the half bar, right? So you, you slur this for the down bow, slur that for the up bow, down, up, down, up, down. And then this could be up, right? So, I mean, I mean, like what you've scored here is possible, but it, it just really, you know, like the players have much far less control and it's all just, you know, it's all as smooth as possible. Uh, you, you know, I, I would also mark like the re-entrance of the dynamics here after the double bar and the time change, right? I mean, it's just, uh, you know, like it's a new section of the piece. Just, you know, when you whenever you get to a new section in terms of dynamics, key signature, um, uh, the um, uh, tempo mark and so on, key change, um, and you know just like a delineated section, like maybe the beginnings of of like if if they go back to the beginning of a section and it's got like repeat marks in it and so on. So th those are good places to sort of think about. I've got a video. I'm sure you've seen it. So you know, so here's a place where I would put in those marks. So you know. Keeping it this simple, we can look at the other criteria and say, like, was there a natural transition to octaves? Beautifully done. Just fits right into the transcription. Is the is there a natural flow in here? Yes. Do you, you expand without clogging up? I mean, the expansion is really into the octaves, and it's kept very very simple in terms of the the um, transcription. So. So, I mean, it doesn't clog up and it doesn't really expand that much, but it's all fine, right? So, it's, so the the context of the criteria are, you, you know, is not that, um, is not that crucial. So, I'd say this is pretty nicely done. I think you could have put in Beethoven's dynamic marks here. And then if you did that, you would want to break the slur. Okay. Okay, so now, <clears throat> next concern. Does this next, does this leggeramente part contrast with the theme? Are there contrasts between lines? Is there harmonic support needed? Okay. So the first thing is, this is a leggeramente section. Beethoven put in that word for a reason. You should leave it in too. Piano, leggeramente, leggeramente, leggeramente. But just on the melodic part. Right? Um, and these, this is nicely handed off, you know, this nice dovetailing here. You know, and, and you could even dovetail on the 16th with this, uh, between these two parts. All right. And I love the way you go from oboe to clarinet, answered by bassoon. Right. And this is so cool right in here. 
right? This just, yeah, once again, reminds me of Mozart um, and, and you know, an early Beethoven. It's really nice. And then the, you know, the pluck, pluck. Like just, yeah, these are such cool ideas, Edwin. <clears throat> I don't think you need to slur. You know, I mean, I, I know why you're doing the slur. It's because there's a slur, like, in the original piano part. Um, it, like, there's the, it's like one phrase, right? It's, I don't think there's a slur in the piano part unless there are some additions. The one that I, I, I actually just, um, I engraved the template from, like, the Ortex edition. I mean, Ortex, what is that? Ortex edition or text is not an addition, <laughs> you know, like, well, I guess, I guess you could sort of say or text is an addition because they edited out all of the stuff that, you know, that, that people put in. Right. Um, and, it, and to an extent, the editor of the or text edition is saying, well, you know, this might be a mistake. And most editors today put in an E flat instead of an E or something like that. Um, okay. All right. So there can be an or text edition, but it just like the, you know, Okay, so so um, anyway, so you might be thinking that since this is all sort of slurry together, which you know, of course, with these winds works best, um, that you might slur and you know, da, da, and, and you know, it's perfectly fine. You know, it works for me. It doesn't doesn't bother me a bit. But like maybe if they were separate, like you know, da, 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 da. I think that that separately articulating the downbeat here would help the uh, the clarinet, the first clarinetist, come in on the beat a little bit better. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So the next concern here in our criteria is, you know, emphatic color of line. Da 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 bum bum. And you know, I mean, I gotta say, Edwin, I think you're you're missing an opportunity here. Um, wasn't there like a crescendo right in here in the original score? Which I, I do have the original score here, but I blotted out some of the dynamics. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, I just feel that you could have leaned into this because you're so, like, you remember how I was suggesting that you put in maybe like a crescendo here and a fermata and so on? Uh, and then you should restore Beethoven's crescendo marks here in the middle. It's, it's just I just feel like you really are like, um, you know, just really lightly like the scoring of this is just so light that there isn't a whole lot of emphasis, right? And then like suddenly we're at mezzo forte, right? It, I I feel like there's not enough. I just you just need to have a little bit more push here and there, you know, push in here, maybe in here, but definitely here, you know, da 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 bum 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 or da 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 subito piano dun 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 right okay all right, so does the harmonic density get set up yet? I mean, it does, except for the fact that, you know, remember I told you already about that, you know, the, the F6-4 six, six, chord. I don't think that that approach necessarily works. But, I mean, I mean, it's kind of a cool idea in some ways, but it's just, yeah, like, you know, not really true to the period. But, I mean, that that is probably a less of a concern than like just not having a lot of strength there right because i think that there needs to be some emphasis because it's sort of wrapping up the whole idea and leading to a new one right so <clears throat> i've talked a little bit about you know whether or not this should be slurred or or individually articulated. I think if you're going to put a slur over repeated notes like this here and this here, you know, you should give us like say maybe staccato marks or tenuto marks to let us know that this is like a mezzo staccato or maybe a portato. So like you get the same bow direction going mm, 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 or, or, you know, that would be like portato or in the case of mezzo staccato, uh, uh, uh. Right, so it's just like it's mezzo staccato is sort of like it's a lesser degree of a portato, but a portato really does kind of drag, like mm, mm, mm. you know, sort of has this sort of almost pulsing or throbbing kind of a quality. All right, so 
Um, I do like the, the call and response here, sort of with the, um, with th between the different colors, the contrast. Um, I, I think that that all works really fine and, and nice little touch of horn right in there. Okay, that all works great for me. Now here you can really simplify things um, in these parts where it's all intervals. It could just be um, a single voice interval uh, and then just like a single voice rest, right? Rather than having two voices all the time. Now here I can see, you know, going to two voices because you've got the unison there, right? But, you know, you can have, like right here, you've got these octaves on a single stem, right? So there's no reason why you couldn't do these intervals on, uh, you know, just in one voice as well. Okay, so now going on, <laughs> to part B, fresh new color. See, the, the thing is, it's like, it's not really a fresh new color because like, you know, you just, you've had the strings just, you know, they've just really have been the dominant kind of voice. Um, and I think that like by starting out, starting out mezzo forte and taking away the crescendo, right? We just have very little in the way of crescendo in this piece like even here's the second page right we don't really have a crescendo until the third page which would be more like six pages if this were like a stand-up score right um you know a, a portrait mode kind of a score rather than landscape like this so uh, what does beethoven want he doesn't actually want you to start off mezzo forte yet he wants da 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 so maybe that would be better, right? For everybody to start off to stay piano and then push into this and then drop off to piano. Um, now, I, you know, um, hmm. yeah, I don't know. I'm not in love with this slurring across the, you know, across the pickup. I mean, yeah, there it, it occurs in this cello part, in this in this pitch in the cello part. But I'm just not so much in love with it with this viola right in here. Yeah, just because, you know, it's like, you know, you just end up with like no emphasis on the downbeat for these players who need to be really precise. Da, 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 And by the way, this is a really cool way of of solving the problem that was in the, in the, um, the, sorry, slight, uh, uh, slight brain fog, just still recovering from, um, from long COVID, <clears throat> from the pitfalls. So da 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 da. So this this works really really great with this you know bum ba bum ba bum kind of rhythm, uh, in the seconds, and then da 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 da. And then this is so cool. Da 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 da. It's so so awesome, Edwin. That's a that is you know this is the first I've seen the trading off kind of. Um, it's actually I mean I've looked through a bunch of scores. And you know, I know what's coming up. So there, I think there are one or two other scores that take this approach. But this is the first one of the ones that I've evaluated that have this, you know, this back and forth approach on this material. So just such a really cool, innovative idea. It's like something I wish that I'd thought of myself. Um, yeah, and then like right in here, I, I'm not in love with this at all. Like slurring across the pickup, and the same thing here. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, if you're going to like, you have this. If you have this beautifully incisive, nicely sculpted kind of ta 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 kind of stuff going on in your strings, you don't want to weaken it, right? I would say try to make the um, try to make the phrasing in the winds conform better to the to the you know, to the rhythm in the strings. But I mean, all that aside. I really love this idea too. The um, the whole idea of like the kind of upper harmony building, and you know, in this ba -da, da da. Now here, like you know, what does Beethoven say in the original score? He wants an accent, and really, what he wants an accent on is not really the chord. He really wants an accent on this note. Now, now you have chosen um, natural horns and trumpets, right? So this is exactly right. So this is going to be a stopped tone. Right, so if that is a stop tone, then you really have to make that an accent, right? So, 
and it relaxes to an open tone, right? So, and, well, actually, they're both. The D is also going to be um, partially stopped. So, I mean, it's. Hmm. I'm just gonna check something. Yeah. Yeah, I mean it's, but one one way or another, it should be accented. Yeah. Yeah, and this this B flat absolutely in the bassoon, same thing in the uh, first bassoon, second oboe, right? You just really need to bring out those things. But, and that it like really doesn't really matter what the violas and cellos do. Like they don't need to be accented. What needs to be accented are these pitches, right? Because Beethoven's trying to bring that out. Okay, so but you know, other than that, this all works great, and I just love the 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 colors of the upper winds right in here. That's a such a cool idea, right? Um, one thing that is a little like something to watch out for is like. I have a note in my evaluation criteria about this to kind, of, to kind of go back, thinking ahead to widening gap, okay, and then gap widening further, right? With the way that this is scored, the lower tones, like the lower string, has just come in really suddenly, right? Now you, you sort of make up for that by just having like you, you know you're you're widening things in terms of widening the dynamic. And the bassoon, you know, I mean, it, you know, it kind of takes the place of some of the middle strings. But like, I just really think that like middle strings could be adding support here to the bassoon and the horn parts right in here. And that way, when things start here, it's not such a shock, right? Um, but, you know, but on the other hand, like you may be wanting to preserve that just sudden smash of the left hand that sort of jumps down, um, you know, about, it feels like it's jumping down an octave, but it's just like a, you know, it's like a inversion of the previous chord. So, so yeah, I mean, I just, I'm not totally in love with the gap right in here. Um, but I mean, I understand the logic behind it, right? And, you know, here we, you know, finally have some crescendo. And this is really lovely right in here. I think, you know, looking at how this chord is voiced, you don't need to hold off on the on the horn and the trumpet this time. I think they could all go to fortissimo here, and it would be fine just because everybody is in their sweet spot. You know, there's nothing about the horns and the trumpets that are going to blot out uh, the other instruments all that much. Yeah, yeah, so cool. Yeah, and then the trill here on the violas. Yeah, I'm just sort of thinking like maybe it would have been cool if the second clarinet instead of just going doink, 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 doink here actually shared that trill with the viola. I just think that that would be way, way more effective. And then also the little you know, the little turn at the end. Da, 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 da. Right? I think it just would just work so much better. Yeah. And I, you know, here it starts to lock into a pattern. And I think that that really works great. You know, the da 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 added to da 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 Look, the you can just go bump, but it dum, but it dum, but it dum. It doesn't have to be da 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 da, right? It's just better. Like it's also easier to keep track for the player if they're going, you know, dun da da dun like, um, like down up down up down, right? In a situation like this, like just like just like you have it here, right? Dun da di dun da di dun da di dun da di dun, right? It's just like it's so much, it's just so much easier to sort of keep on track with the other player. And yeah, and then this right in here, just being all individually articulated, I think that that works better. So that's good too. All right, so now finally, 
Let's go on to section C. So new quality of tone is my first question there in my evaluation criteria. And um, is the accompaniment a complimentary color? Right? So you got the um, doubling of clarinet, first clarinet and, uh, and first violin. Yeah, and I mean, you sort of keep, you hold off on any kind of doubling of the the lower string or middle strings in here, I should say. Uh, you know, that's okay. It's it's fine. Um, yeah, I mean, just a possibility as things progress of things getting a little out of balance. You know, in terms of like if there isn't any support, right, Bob? Bum. I'm trying to think, like, is that on a G horn? Bum, bum. Could you have gotten these two pitches right in here? I'm trying to think to myself. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, I think that you could have a little bit more doubling on these lower parts. And, and this is really cool, like trading off to the second violins and having the first violins being subsidiary. I've got no problem with that at all. But I'm just more worried that some of these subsidiary accompanying parts, like occasionally they get doubled and not, right? So like you just have a danger of things becoming imbalanced. Now, having said all that, I really love the trading off of clarinet for, you know, solo clarinet to solo oboe, and then like, and then just the second clarinet coming in and then the first clarinet, like this should all be first clarinet, by the way. And, you know, same thing here, just all first oboe. And then a due here on the, on the oboe, and yeah, and this is really cool. This um, this little part right in here. I mean, yeah, I mean, once again, a little danger of, like, e even more danger of throwing things, throwing the the consistency of the color out of balance without any kind of doubling, or strengthening of some of these um, supporting parts. Right, but I mean, you don't have to be too torturous about that. You know, you could. <clears throat> You could take the approach where the main melody, as we see it in the first violins and then the second violins, is doubled by first players. And then the second players of each group are left to double the, um, so the supporting parts, right? See, that, that, that might be a really good approach to take. And, like, and those players, you know, would just be told to play down a bit. Right, and then and then you you don't you end up with a much more homogeneous um, balanced kind of a texture. But yeah, I think you can. Bum bum. Just thinking about D, and that's. <sighs> yeah, no, I see. No, I don't think you can get that on a that that wouldn't be open on a on a, a G horn. My apologies, I was just. I was I wasn't um, wasn't thinking, but you could get this with the second bassoon, right? Very easily. You could get this um, low D on the uh, on your G horn. That would be I think that'd be a written G. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. I just just have a tiny bit of brain fog left over. So there are a couple things about transpos transpositions and then like remembering like little bits, like taking mental notes about things and then reminding myself to remind you about them later. Those those things are a little shaky. All right, so apologies. All right, so we come to our first little, you know, place, character, and weight. You know, I, I like, once again, how simple it is. Dun, dun, dun. And then, um, and then here you just trade off. And this is great because this is just really contrasted from, you know, before you had the mixed winds and strings, and then here you are like all winds. And I feel that this, you know, being all winds here is all the more of an argument to make, to, to double these parts right in here, these other, these supporting parts with... Um, other wins, even if you just like mark the second players down to pianissimo, just supporting 
these bits a little bit, right? You know, so second bassoon here, and maybe like um, uh, second clarinet could be playing, you know, could be helping out second bassoon and some of these other things and so on. So like, it, it, you know, you don't have to, you know, you could, you could leave the other parts at piano or even mezzo piano, right? Okay. And this works beautifully, the, the oboe um, trading off to flute. And, uh, you, you know, I think you could, the, the uh, dovetail note could be a 16th. That's perfectly fine. And this is lovely, you know, this da, so do you really want it to be da, ta, or do you want it to be ta, 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 same thing back here. Like, do you really, I mean, think about the idea of going down, up, down with a bow, right? And like ta, 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 because in the piano part, right, we're getting hammer, hammer, hammer. And it doesn't matter if the player has got the little slur mark, the hammer is going to be hitting each each string or each group of strings in order, right? So you have to think like, you know, maybe there's a slur on it in the piano part, but does, what's the effect of the pianist playing it, right? So there might be places where you really just want the ta, 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 no matter what the, you know, what the slurring is given to it. Okay, so... Um, so now we've got this um, right in here, and I would say that like you know this might be a little easier to play in like in you know smaller group bowings, you know, you know down up down up. It's just because of like all of the register crossing. It's just a little easier to do under separate bows. I I feel just speaking as a violist. Da, 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 da. Yeah, you know, man, I was like, speaking as a violist, I really want a viola again. I just think there's a part of me that just goes back to when I was 14 and just thinking that I was the, that was the funnest thing that I was doing, was playing viola, you know. Everything else was just, you know, ugh. aside composing, aside from composing, just like, ugh. it was just an awful place that I was living in. This is really lovely, though, like consistency of texture in the, in the supporting parts. I feel that that really works great. Now here, um, you know, you can have these longer bows here, but like, I think that this is a lot to be doing for these players a due for this long, right? So it might even be better to like trade off, like start with the first player and then trade off on this note to the second, right? See, and then trade off to the first again right here right so I, that i just feel you know i mean it's just the okay so so to qualify that i think you know most first players worth their metal worth their you know the bamboo of their cane could probably pull this off but i mean it's it's almost like why do they have to right i mean maybe it's better just to trade off from player to player because what all they're you know what they're doing what what people are really going to be hearing is the cello so like if you're if you have a wind part like this that is doubling the cellos say or some other string instrument and it's just basically adding strength to it then don't do so much to put a huge strain on the player right so i mean it's not that this is a huge strain but it's just uh, just fiddly you know like and, and and like with the second in there too with this adue there's just like more chances of things being inexact and just not as flowing so you know it just might be better to trade off on a note that's like really really easy to trade off i'd say this this a right this a here and this a here are just like the easiest places right cuz you got this bo you know what I mean? So it's just like, that's just an easy place to come in on the second beat. Because, I mean, it's just a, to, to a certain degree, it's just kind of scales, right? And then you have a way of getting back to where you started, right? Or going to the minor. So, I mean, just like like I said, you know, once again, uh, a very cool score, Edwin. And, and yeah, you know, like, you know, just reminds me of Beethoven's uh, beautiful placid F major scoring. You know, he just had this, you know, he had he had this way of scoring an F that just, you know, was all encompassing. You know, he got so many moods out of it, but like the, you, you know, it's almost as if 
you know, by the time he got to the sixth, you just knew if he was going to pick a key to be placid and pastoral in and, and calm and, you know, it would be F major. And that's what he did. <laughs> so that's what this reminds me of. And it also reminds me of Mozart in a lot of places, especially like the first flute or the single flute, right? So, so good work. Well done. I love it. So I don't know, but uh, what do you think? dear viewer out there um i'm sure that edwin would like to know your opinions and um you know and and you know anything you want to back me up on or disagree with or or you know or have a completely different perspective you know whether it supports my ideas or not it's all welcome to share below would love to hear what you think and edwin you know if you have a chance to you know to maybe comment on the last few scores that I've released you know Adam Bravo and and Alex and Nathan I'm sure they'd love to hear from you and you know to hear what your thoughts are about their scores um, you know, if people could just really comment on each other's scores it'd be fantastic and um, and it you know just really makes me feel not so alone <laughs> these um, these orchestration challenge videos really you know they only get a few hundred views each and then like over the course of many years <laughs> you know several years more and more people come to watch them and they come to see them and eventually you know like they sort of start to average out at more like you know you know more getting closer to like seven or eight hundred and that's all good i mean i'm not really in it for the views though i'm just you know and that's and that's really the point of what i'm trying to say here is is that it's like it's more about the engagement i just really love it and 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 by saying engagement i'm not saying like clicks and likes and you know and comments that make my channel get bigger it's the it's the comments that help each other you know in the community get stronger that's really what i'm in this for and um you know mine as well as everybody else's so um Comment with a will, everybody. All right. And thank you so much, Edwin, for being part of this, putting all that great work that you did into this score and for supporting the channel. It's hugely appreciated. It's just really helping me keep going when things are getting a little rough out here in New Zealand. Um, coming back from a trip overseas and then getting sick and trying to tie up some loose ends and stuff. Um, yeah, it's been a strange year. But I'll talk about that when we get to the um, to the wrap up, which I hope will happen at the end of the year, maybe before everybody goes off on holidays. All right. Cross your fingers and let's hope we get there. Thanks so much, everybody. And I will see you soon with another great entry to this orchestration challenge.